So, Elena, welcome to the Voices of Change podcast show. Uh, Elena Antoniak, uh, you uh, like to imagine your life just like a puzzle. Would you just like to tell us a little bit more about the puzzle? Yeah, thank, thank you, Christine, for having me. Uh, it seems that you, you read my uh, LinkedIn page and indeed uh, I see my life as a, as a puzzle. Um, I will start with, you know, somehow with the beginning. Yeah, I was uh, born in Romania during the, the communism period uh, in a small town somewhere in the northeast of Romania, close to Ukraine and Republic of Moldova. If I remember well, were very tough times, you know, uh, for Eastern Europeans at the time and a kind of a gray area for us, but uh, those times are gone. So I studied in a public school like everybody else at the time. Um, and I remember that I was extremely, uh, I was actually a heavy reader all my, all my childhood. Um, so you like, I, you like to read a lot? Oh yes, oh yes. Okay, oh, yes. what is your favorite book by, for instance? Um, I'm not sure if you uh, if you know uh, one of uh, if you heard about Mircea Eliade. He wrote the uh, history of religions. Oh yes, that's interesting. Yeah, so he oh. was a, a Romanian uh, a writer. Uh, I used to love his books, uh, and I was always intrigued uh, by his books. But I I used to to read almost everything. Like I started with the uh, police type books. Uh, I and I ended up with philosophy, uh, culture, yeah. and so on. I, well, I this all leads to what you do now uh, as a business owner of Expat Global, right? Because um, you have experienced all the problems that all the issues that expatriates uh, face. Yes, yes. Right. I, I actually, I will, I will, uh, I will jump to to there because uh it's uh, somehow uh, this path uh, it started with uh, you know the university um i used to love many things at the time like communication law it was with law it was more the idea of justice um so i graduated uh, law and political science uh, in bucharest uh, but my dream at the time was to be honest, to emigrate in the US, you know? Uh, and I used to apply to get a, a scholarship and I was applying, uh, I remember for an MBA, but people from the US, from the university, they were writing me back, look for an MBA, you really need to have some work experience. Then I end up with a, with a scholarship in economics in Belgium, where I lived for three years. At the time, Romania was not joined, it was not part of the EU, so, I had to get a visa, I had to get a residence permit at the time. So somehow my path to mobility started since, since then. Um, during my time in Belgium, uh, I traveled a lot with the, with the university. Uh, I traveled to you know, Africa, to Asia. I, uh, I was really fascinated by Asia. Uh, I remember that I was, it was a time when I was very determined to move to South Korea. However, somehow after three years, South uh, Korea. Okay, why? Why so? Yeah, it was um, uh, when when I landed in South Korea, things like and life was so much different, really, so much different than what I was used in Europe. Um, they were so advanced with technology, uh, and it was like everything was very, very easy. Like it was easier through technology. And this was happening 15, 16 years ago, you know, and I was, I was really fascinated at, at, uh, at the time. Um, so somehow I uh, returned to, to Romania. Uh, I remember that I returned to Romania with a très bel accent belge. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I remember. Really nice. That's cute. <laughs> yes, but you know, yeah, and like, then you moved to a Dutch company where you had uh, the HR yes. department, and then you learned how to uh, organize all the expatriation processes. Huh? Yes, yes. I, I, I somehow I jumped into this uh, uh, Dutch relocation company. Uh, I remember that after two years, I became a man managing partner. I don't know how, but I was. Uh, Indeed, I, I had good results in business, but I think it was the case because I had as well a very big mouth. You know, I was very outspoken all the time. It was uh, at the time, if I remember well, I was uh, kind of a my way or the highway. So um, now 
looking back, I think I changed quite a lot. I believe that I'm more soft. So uh, yeah, then um, my uh, my path um, continued uh, with the position uh, in a board of a company listed on the stock exchange. I was an HR executive there for three years. It was an amazing, an amazing opportunity for me because actually I was literally in the shoes of an HR. Yeah, so I learned what the client needs and what the client wants and what the client expects. Literally, Did you have from, a lot of expatriates in that company, right, at, at the time? Yes, but on the uh, I had expatriates, but as well, I was managing everything. Like, you know, I was an HR executive, so I had even the recruitment, I had the payroll, I have the labor law. It was mm -hmm. everything, you know, under, under my control. And it was a, a, a great experience. It was a fantastic growth period for me, which, uh, yeah, ended That's up great. after two years. And so what was the motivation uh, of creating your own business? Because, uh, uh, I mean, is it part of the puzzle? Uh, that you think that okay you 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 were on the um i mean as an hr executive uh you you had uh reasons really to to create your own business what, what was the main motivation um you know i i really love consultancy like i i love to be exposed to various uh industries uh for me consultancy means like to learn from each and every one, you know. And after three years, I realized I, I, I made a lot of a lot of things. They're good things. I implemented, you know, a lot of things. And but you know, in a, in a large company, things are not so fast, you know. Like in in in. I see what companies. you mean. I have experimented exactly the same issues. I mean, when you want things to move on fast, you you think I better have my own company, right? <laughs> yes, yes. For me, it was uh, always a, a fight, you know, because I, I, I'm very energetic. As I mentioned before, you know, in my first like job uh, in in the Dutch company, it was very much my way or the highway. If I knew that I'm on the right track, and this is something that has to be implemented. I was really pushing all over, all the way, you know, and people were like, Jesus Christ, she's click, keep on melting our heads. Let's do how she wants to, you know, <laughs> but with a large organization, I was pushing. I was very pushy, you know, because I was, yeah, I, well. I, my expectation was like, things should happen overnight because I know that this will bring results and everybody wants results. Right. Of course, it's much more than this because there were many departments. Uh, yeah, well, specifically when you deal with people's uh, people's uh, private issues, I mean, people who have children who need to put their kids uh, at the right time in the right school, I'm sure that it's all what it's all about. And it's about getting visas and the right visas. I mean, yes. actually, um, I might have some questions for you because my my uh, daughter-in-law is, um, is a Siberian. And now she's she's back. She changed her name because she married my son, and um, and now she has huge problems because she didn't go to the right department in Russia to change her name, and now she has an international passport, but she can't she can't get it right because it's her previous name. I mean, it's it's just a hassle. I mean, so um, this is great. I mean, talking to you using a practical example. For instance, what would you do then if you had uh, someone uh, in your consultancy? I mean, the, the company Expat Global uh, was born in May uh, 2019, right? Yeah. So imagine uh, uh, I were your customer and, um, and uh, my son and, uh, and his wife both lived in uh, China. And then they came back just before uh, the confinement just before i mean you know because they didn't want to have the baby in china they wanted to have the baby in france mm -hmm. so my grandchild was born um you know in france on january uh, 2020 and um and, and now she has i mean they've they've had the huge issues especially with the russian government <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is really something so tell us a little bit uh, more about uh, the path uh, through what I mean, a customer comes along uh, and what, what is the issue? What is the main issue that they face? Uh, 
Yeah, so let me let me uh, explain you a bit. Uh, you know what, how the platform is built. Uh, okay. Actually, um, our our uh, industry in the last thirty years um, is it was very much focused on you know small businesses, small consultancy boutique businesses based in each and every country. But the problem in the, the in the industry is that uh, the companies, those consultancy companies, they uh, must work in a uh, in a uh, sender receiver format. Meaning that, for example, we take your uh, daughter-in-law uh, situation. Actually, you know, you have uh, your grandson born in in France, and she is married with a French citizen. So actually, you sh you need a consultant in France and then a consultant in Russia. Yeah. Right. So, and I mean, the, I mean, now she's facing the biggest, the hugest issues, because uh, since she didn't go to the right type of um, uh, organization to get the, the name change, now she can't go back to the government because they, I mean, the, the previous one told them uh, we shouldn't have done this, but we did this because you asked us to do it. And now she's facing and, and it's going to take us uh, her probably three months in order to get back to France as she has the ticket to come, to fly back on, on September the 17th. So um, I'm facing those issues right now. And I really don't know, I mean, she doesn't know how to deal with them. I mean, really she's, uh, now she's uh, staying at her sister's in uh, Irkutsk. Um, and, um, and she's just desperate because she doesn't know what to do. Okay, so yeah, maybe we, we can have a, like, a, you know, a discussion uh, after because we need to understand a bit more. We need to make a very short assessment to really understand what, what she needs to. But if usually people, they can get in trouble if they, I don't know, if they work with, uh, with um, you know, with professionals who are not really tied to the, to the, um, uh to the domain you know immigration is very very particular and this is more this issues is more on the consular uh side so yeah there are some aspects which which must be done right from the very beginning otherwise you just uh, you know a professional who really knows the to do the job uh must uh, make some uh, some cleanup in the mm. file yeah yeah well, yeah. tell us about, a, a, you know, a just a simple case. I mean, uh, a customer who needs to, I don't know, who needs to expatriate. I mean, his company yeah. has asked him to expatriate in the USA, for instance. Uh, what happens? What, what, what is the, what do you provide? Uh, what is the practical stuff that they can, yeah. they can, they can find uh, on Expat Global? Yeah. So, for example, let's say that we have, I don't know, a French company okay. uh, and this French company has uh, clients in the U.S. and they need to send uh, a batch of uh, 10 or 20 engineers, uh, you know, to fix something for, let's say, you know, or to implement a project or to uh, build a, a, a line on a, on a, on a plant. Um, actually, the HR would go into our platform, into the platform, they will find directly uh, immigration lawyers, relocation providers, uh, move, movers um, in our platform. They will find two, three, four, five options with vetted service providers for each category. Uh, they will be able to launch um, if they have kind of a volume, for example, if you have five up like more than five employees that you want to, to transfer in one shot. Uh, you, they have the possibility to organize an RFQ right away uh, because we, we have a feature design uh, mainly for, for this. And they can compare the services. Uh, they, will re, they will have a review section where they can see like, look, this provider has five stars um they in the in their package and what they're offering is actually included this 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 and this this provider has only this or five five stars and so on so it's very very transparent and it's what very, type very, of providers for instance i mean people who uh, have rent apartments or relocation immigration providers immigration meaning immigration lawyers 
or consultants, uh, professional consultants uh, who can help you to obtain the work permit, the resident permit, the visa, the apostles, the over-legalization, everything in the immigration uh, sphere. And then you have the relocation providers that you can find in the platform for each and every country. Now, right now we are covering more than 180 countries, but we have a large uh, team behind uh, who is actually updating the and vetting services every day. So we are growing every day. Um, so we have the relocation professionals offering uh, the house hunt, uh, uh, the contract, um, uh, the rental contracts uh, uh, support, uh, help for the children to register at school, spouse support, and everything related to this settling in, registration at the city hall, and, and everything in and the, the schools, the, also the college, the, the schools, school. the schools, colleges. All, all types of uh, uh, consultation in this area. Actually, we we help the the the, the expatriates to settle very fast. Um, I don't know if you know, but relocation is actually the fourth uh, most difficult process in somebody's life. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, so it's actually a lot of hassle. And why companies do pay for those services that you know professionals when you transfer a professional anyway you, you change his or her life but if you offer the support very very fast actually you decrease your cost with the induction because if you let your employees to you know to search on their own um everything around um it it's actually a, a high cost a high so cost how does it work do people fill a form online on expat global is it an online service or how does so, it so work? it's actually okay the hr would find the would find the immigration or the lawyer provider uh for the us uh, they will contact they will place the order uh they will place the order and then uh um uh after this actually the provider would receive the the request and they will start to process the uh the order so actually the hr would have full access to to the to the service provider the server the service provider is actually uh, uploading everything into into the platform, meaning all the forms. They will ask exactly what the documents they need from the HR. They will ask exactly what documents they need from the expatriate. Um, the HR would see exactly what is the status of the of the process. You don't need to call. Like, did you upload the documents? Did you send the uh, the invitation uh, and so on and so forth? So um, it's a very very transparent way and so all it's all done it. automatically yes yes it's it it's like we connect through our our platform the three actors involved in the process meaning the hr who is looking for uh professional services and then you have the uh, expatriate yeah who is in need who is actually the beneficiary of the the end service and then you have the service providers who must provide the work and imagine that um, uh, what has been somehow built so far in our industry uh, until now it was very much focused on the HR and softly on the expatriate but we realized that we need to to build the tools for the for the service providers as well because if they don't have the tools and they continue to work on excels or I don't know various spreadsheets and they need to send reports manual reports to to the hrs this means that actually they 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 do not really perform the the work as fast as it is expected imagine okay. that now with this platform the hr would go into the platform and they will take you know the reports on everything how how fast uh, a, a work has been provided how much it costed everything how much the provider spent on uh, third party costs they don't need to go back to the provider and ask all the time could you please send me this could you please inform me about this you know so okay. we try to so you're uh, an international expatriate link maker yes yes <laughs> offering all the tools to yeah. all the three actors involved in uh in the process like to to make their life somehow easier okay do you have uh, many competitors on on that market no this is the first the first SaaS enabled marketplace uh, that was built 
Actually, in the market, we you have the, the SaaS, meaning the case management systems uh, that are offered to service providers, to HRs, in order to keep their uh, expatriate fleet, uh, to organize their work. Um, but to have like this case management embedded with, uh, with the marketplace, meaning with the possibility to find providers everywhere in the world, whenever you need, whatever you need, uh, this is this is actually uh, still unique at, at while we okay speak. that's great so do you have uh, large firms just like you know coca-cola or do you have international large firms who work with you yes yeah, so actually um, w- what is interesting is that the adoption rate is very much on uh, smaller companies uh, the companies w- who can take uh, a fast decision and who can you know experience and uh, move to different uh, to different uh, uh, systems actually this is somehow a strategy that we have in mind that we want to tackle very much uh, middle and uh, small companies in the beginning but you know i built an offline company uh, which is you know boutique consultancy company which uh, has a a large pool of corporate clients and all those clients, because I work with them for so long, for so many years, they are actually uh, joining our platform. So the commercial focus is to invite the medium and small companies to to join us. Uh, But we have our large corporate clients who started to to buy from uh, from our platform. The ones that's great. That's great. Yeah. So So it was it was kind of a a, let's say a good start for us uh, because you know as a startup it's it's not easy to you know to to bring clients in you of course know, did you have to leverage some phones um meaning sorry could you please leverage read? some phones i mean you know uh, did you did you need to you know leverage some money from 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 the banks or from from you know people who help startups uh, well, this is uh, actually another story. Uh, when I started this uh, crazy, you know, crazy idea, because everything started uh, when I realized that the industry needs more transparency. Like I was like, no, like we we need to be able as service providers and professionals, we need to be able to get our clients in a very very transparent way. Yeah, and. I was thinking like, okay, how this booking works, how this Airbnb, Uber, everything, you know, all those platforms, it's it's easy, it's uh, seamless, you know, you go there and you choose and it's it's fantastic. And um, and for me, I took this as an example and I said, no, I, I want to, to build a thing like that. And everybody in the industry was like, okay, it's, it's very complicated. It's very hard. And I said, no. And everybody was telling me, like, you need a lot of money, a lot of money. And at the time when I started, I didn't really understand or really knew this uh, this game with the VCs, with venture capitalists and so on. And what I did was actually I applied for EU funds and I got two uh, grants, quite big grants. Uh, so we are actually backed up by the European Union. Uh, they very well, this is like, great. Congratulations. This is super. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So we are very, very proud of this. Uh, it was a tremendous work, but they granted us. So we are backed up by the European Union uh, to build uh, <laughs> those two, uh, because actually we have two systems behind which are embedded. Um, and um, yeah, so this is uh, this is how uh, we how we managed to to build this. This is so this is great. So for uh, SME or medium sized company, this is a great help. I yes. mean, if if uh, if those people want to have um, people who are expatriating in other countries, they can then have a look. And um, well, Elena, tell us uh, how uh, can we uh, get in touch with your company? Can you can you uh, maybe give us a you know an an an, an email or a website? I will sure, anyway. Sure. I will I will put the website under the the podcast. But it's always nice if you can tell us how to get in touch with you and your team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christine, for your uh, uh, help in this. Uh, you know, startups they really need 
you know, uh, a tribe to help them strive. Of course, they, you need visibility. I mean, you yes. know, I mean, you, you need to be more visible and people need to know that you exist. Yes. That, that you that you can you and your team how many members do you have in the team right now so we uh, right now without the technology team uh we have 20 20 people and the technology team is divided in 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 two in the technology team we have colleagues from republic of moldova from ukraine uh from romania uh, we have colleagues in the team from ireland and so on so we are quite a somehow, international team <laughs> yes yeah it, it is so uh, it's uh, expatglobal.com is that right it's it's expat.global expat.global oh that's, that's great yeah. very easy to remember yeah well um elena and apart from working what do you do do you have any hobby uh <laughs> i love i i have hobbies of course uh I have two small children, um, uh, my daughters, I have two daughters and, uh, and a cat, and I love to, to, uh, to ski, I love winter sports very, very much, and I enjoy this, to do this with, with my children, otherwise I love to walk in the, in the, in the forest, I love nature very, very much. Great, uh, and where, where is the main plant based? Is it still in Romania? the main sorry the main company i mean the, the yes the yes yes yeah yes it's based in romania because actually uh few people know that romania has a, a an amazing um you know tax uh system which is very favorable to to startups uh and we have a very very good speed yeah we have the fourth uh speed on the internet uh, like the the fastest Fourth speed in 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 the world. I don't know if you know about this. And uh, Romania is actually ranking the third in top of the most attractive for uh, digital nomads. Well, that's that's just great to know. I mean, it's great to know that such a company exists and uh, that uh, you know uh, many HR uh, would would love to get in touch with Expat Global uh, if they have any issues, if they want to. Uh, Well, you know, if they want one of their employee to uh, immigrate, why not in Romania yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, very... and anywhere in the world, 180 countries, I mean, covering everyone and all the suppliers and, and all the tax people and the HR support. That's that's great to hear. And uh, well, I wish that that it will be heard by many uh, HR who just um you know, uh, watch uh, what's going on on YouTube and LinkedIn and the social network, and that can, can get in touch with you. Well, thank Elena, you so uh, thank you so much for being with us today. I mean, uh, I wish you all the best for Expat Global and uh, and uh, that, that company to grow and grow and multiply by two or three uh, within the next few years. This is the best. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and so, dear listeners, um, uh, I see you next time for another podcast, uh, Voices of Change, because Elena, of course, does make a big change for people in uh, people's life. And so, uh, thank you for being with us and uh, thank you for thank listening you. and goodbye. <laughs>